Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson play feuding frenemies in Martin McDonough's latest film, set on an Irish coast in 1923. The island of Inishirin, a rustic windswept rock off the coast of Ireland, does not appear on any real-world maps, but its geography is unmistakable. Not only because the sweaters and the sheep, the pints of Guinness and the thatched roofs bespeak a carefully curated Irish authenticity, but also because what happens on this island locates it firmly in an imaginary region that might be called County McDonough. With 2008's In Bruges and now the Banshees and Inishirin, the Irish actors, under the writing and directing aegis of frequently pleasantly perverse Martin McDonough, displays a chemistry and veracity interplay that recalls nothing so much as the maestros of the early 20th century comedy of exasperation. This being a McDonough work, it's a comedy of mortification as well as exasperation. It begins with a beautiful overhead shot of the little Irish island, all green below a clear blue sky. In this picture, it only rains at night, which, considering actual weather patterns in Ireland, places the film in yet another genre, that of fantasy. The Carter Burwell score evokes idyllic times, and we see life is rather easy for Padraig, Farrell, a milk farmer who lives with his sister in a modest cottage and, apparently, calls on his friend Colm, Gleason just about every day or two. Before he sets out, he makes a remark about Calm to his sister, Siobhan, Carrie Condon, who sarcastically replies, maybe he just don't like you no more. This turns out to be a bit of inadvertent prophecy, because Colm rebuffs Padraig. After the course of several discussions, we learn that Colm has come to find Padraig dull, and the earnest fellow's conversation is indeed limited, if amiable, and he believes he's got better things to do with his time, like compose songs on his fiddle. When Colm goes to confession at the island's church, he reveals he's also suffering from despair. He's suffering from quite a bit more than that. Banshees is set in 1923, and several times its characters discuss hearing guns going off on the not-too-far-away mainland. Conflicts between Colm and Padraig serve as a handy metaphor for Ireland's civil war at that time. But the movie works best when it doesn't foreground the metaphor which becomes rather grisly as a commentary on a particular Irish kind of obstreperousness. As in, Colm tells Padraig that if the latter continues to talk to Colm or at Colm after Colm's made it clear that he doesn't want Padraig's company or conversation, Colm will cut off one of his fingers. Now keep in mind that Colm's a fiddler who wants to continue fiddling, so this is actually, as a strategy, a sight worse than cutting off one's nose to spite his face. And so, after Patrick gets in Colm's face again, Colm actually does it. One of the neatest tricks on the movie is how McDonough leads the viewers to identify more with Colm than with Patrick early on. One feels, yeah, this is a rude serving of friendship on Colm's part, but why can't Patrick just let the guy be? Some of Colm's points are well taken. Colm's probably better for Patrick than Dominique, the exceedingly rude policeman's son, who makes Patrick look like an urban conversationalist but sometimes these are the breaks, social life-wise. But once the fingers begin coming off, your jaw slackens and your eyes pop. Where's this going to end? Nobody does self loathing like the Irish, and with this film, McDonough is on much surer footing than he was when trying to tell America a than he was when trying to tell America a thing or two with his film, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, in 2017. Banshee has got touches of tenderness that are sometimes ever so slightly confounding, as when Colm shows care for Padraig after the latter gets a pasting from Dominique's bastard cop father. Being the writer he is, he often counters those with bracing reality checks. And as a director, he orchestrates the give and take between Farrell and Gleason with the mastery of someone who appreciates these performances as much as discerning audiences do. They let it fly. Farrell does some of his best acting with his furrowed eyebrows. Gleason has a glare that's both a death ray and an enigma. The pauses these guys enact are at times even funnier than the verbal comebacks McDonough has come up with for them. And as it happens, Barry Kilgan as Dominique almost steals the movie out from under the leads, his very funny, vulgar brashness never quite camouflaging his character's poignant vulnerability. Very good show all around. The Banshee of Inishirin might feel a little thin if you hold it to conversational standards of comedy or drama. It's better thought of as a piece of village gossip, given a bit of literary polish and a handsome pastoral finish. Inishirin may not be a real place, but its eccentric characters, rugged vistas, and vivid local legends make it an attractive tourist destination all the same.